To make an emotion, you need core brain networks to do a couple of things. First, your brain has to represent all the stuff going on inside your body. Your heart beating, your lungs filling and emptying, your stomach digesting food, your hormones rushing through your bloodstream, and the workings of your immune system. This activity produces a spectrum of basic feeling from pleasant to unpleasant and from calm to jittery. Even neutral stems from these physical changes. Second, your brain has to remember your past experiences. Here's a way to think about it. Your brain spends all of its time locked in a dark, silent box called your skull. Its only clues about what's going on in the world around you come from scraps of information from your senses, sights, sounds, smells, touches, and tastes. Your brain has to figure out what these scraps mean so it knows how to keep you alive and well. Do you need to run? Do you need to laugh? And so on. Its only tool for answering this question is your past experience. So your brain has access to the sensory effects without actually knowing what the causes are. It has to guess at what the causes are. What did similar scraps of information mean the last time you were in a similar situation? Your brain is taking guesses using your past experience, and it uses the momentary information from the outside world to either confirm those guesses or to modify them. The same process for deciphering the outside world also works for figuring out what's going on inside your body. If you have a dull ache in your stomach, does it mean that you're hungry, that you're sick, that you're angry, that you're missing someone? Again, your brain is using past experience to guess what caused this situation. So you have an emotion when your brain uses past experience to give your sensations meaning as an emotion. Maybe the last time your stomach ached like this, in a similar situation, you were angry. Maybe you clenched your fists and started to breathe deeply. Your brain may guess that your current stomach ache has a similar cause, anger, and needs a similar action. Likewise, when you see emotions in other people, it's because your brain uses past experience to give emotional meaning to their smiles and frowns and laughs and hand gestures and body postures and so on. Sometimes a scowl means anger, but other times the same scowl means that someone is concentrating really hard.